السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ ان اللہ و ملاکت یسلون علی النبی یادین آمن و صلی علیہ وسلم و تسلیمہ اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ سیدنا و نبی نا مولانا محمد طب القلوبی و دوائحا و عافیت البدانی و شفائحا و نور الابصار و ضیاحا و علیہ و صحبی و بارک وسلم دائمان آبدا غوث اعظم بمن بے سر و ساما مدد قبلائدی مدد کعبۂ ایما مدد قادریم نارائے یا غوث اعظم میزنم دمز شیخ احمد رضا خان قطب عالم میزنم سیدی یا مرشدی شاہ مصطفیٰ خاص زندہ باد مسلک سرکار اعلیٰ اعلیٰ حضرت زندہ باد یا الہی مسلک احمد رضا خان زندہ باد حفظ ناموں سے رسالت کا جو ذمہ دار ہے سیدی یا مرشدی شاہ مصطفیٰ خاص زندہ باد حامل فیض رضا مصطفیٰ امداد کن صلی اللہ علیہ نبی المی و علیہ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم صلاحت و سلام علیہ کے سیدی یا صندی یا حبیبی یا طبیبی یا رسول اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم و علیٰ علی کا و اصحابی کا یا رحمت للعالمین الحمد للہ ٹوڈے از دا نائنٹینتھ آف رمضان اینڈ سیشن نمبر ایٹین آف دس رمضان سیریز وے ان وی آر اٹیمپ ٹو لرن پائٹی فرام دا لائفز آف دا پائس الحمد للہ آئی تھنک یس ڈے وی لرن سم ویری ویلیوبل اینڈ ویری امپورٹنٹ اینڈ امیزنگ لیسنس فرام دا لائف آف صحابی رسول حضرت سیدنا ابو عبیدہ ابن الجرہ رضی اللہ تعالیٰ عن اینڈ آئی تھنک آور ڈسکشن آن سیف گارڈنگ امانا اینڈ دیٹ وچ ہیز بین انٹرسٹیڈ ٹو اس واز اے ویری امپورٹنٹ ڈسکشن Uh, yesterday we also learned and understood from it great lessons about what to wish for and how we should be generous with what Allah bestows upon us. Uh, inshallah ul azim, today we will try and learn from some, learn some important lessons from looking at the life and the passing away of another sahabi rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam by the name of Hazrat Sayyidina Uthman bin Maz'un radiallahu ta'ala an. Before we continue, let us all recite the Rudi Paak, Allahumma salli ala سیدنا و نبینا و مولانا محمد و علیہ علی سیدنا مولانا محمد و اصحاب ہی و بارک وسلم صلاحت دائمت مقبول تعد بہ ان حق العظیم دے از نو ڈاؤٹ دیٹ وی آل وی ول آل ڈائی ون ڈے موت از ٹو کم دا حکم آف اللہ سبحان و تعالیٰ کلو نفس دائکت الموت ایوری سول ول ٹیسٹ ڈیتھ اینڈ And that is why we always read inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'oon to Allah we belong to to Allah is our return so there is no doubt that we will all die one day and death will indeed overtake us it is a reality and it is a fact and we will have to leave this world and journey towards the akhirat and the first manzil of the akhirat is our grave Our graves are the, is the first manzil of our akhirat, of our hereafter. You have heard many times the great awliya and the pious servants of Allah saying that when they pass away, they should be buried near the pious servants of Allah so that they can attain their blessings. And this is something which is very important. Today's <clears throat> discussion and learning from the pious is a slightly different angle. We usually look at what they did and we learn from that. But today we want to look at the life and the passing away and li- listen, learn to some very, very important lessons. Uh, some people ask, what difference is there where you are buried? What difference does it make? You know, if you pass away wherever you are buried, what difference does it make? Well, the fact is that there is a big difference. If we are buried near the pious servants of Allah, we will be blessed with their blessings in our graves and in the akhirat. And we will, inshallah, by being buried near the pious servants of Allah, the blessing we will get even then is وَكُنُمْ أَسْصَادِكِينَ will be attached to them. And this manner of being buried near the pious and to desire to be buried near the pious is from the time uh, and the blessed era of our beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa And this was always the way of the Anbiya Ikram before that as well. You will find that the pious servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Uh, are those beloved and Mubarak servants that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had blessed with all this greatness but even though they were blessed with such greatness they would always wish that if something happened to them they should be laid to rest near some pious person I still remember Huzur Sayyidi Taj Sharia one, one, one message and one lecture that, or rather a message of wasiyah that he gave that when I do pass from this world 
no matter wherever I pass away, I should be laid to rest somewhere where there are pious servants of Allah. I should be in the close proximity of pious servants of Allah. And Alhamdulillah, even Hadrat got his wish that he's so close to Sarkari Allah Hadrat, Huzur Hujjut al-Islam, Huzur Mufti Azameen, Huzur Mufassir Azam, and all the pious servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Baril Sharif. But although they were pious, the beloveds of Allah, they, they are pious people. But although they are pious people, they still wished, the pious still wished to be laid to rest next to the pious. Now, this is something that is very, very important. The pious wish to be laid to rest near the pious. Okay, even though, even though they themselves uh, are so pious and blessed servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but they, they made tamanna that when we pass away, we should be laid to rest. We wish we could be laid to rest next to pious servants. Why? Because it means that they didn't rely and have, uh, have, have fakhar over their own piety or their own excellence. But they wanted to take the blessings of the other greater pious servants of Allah and the pious predecessors. Now, I said to you, we will talk today from, we'll try to learn this great lesson about wanting to be near the pious, uh, whether it's in life or in death, and wanting to take the blessings of the pious, whether it is in life or after passing from this world. And, uh, and, and, and the Sahaba Ikram that we chose today to talk about, and we've, Alhamdulillah, we've discussed, uh, we've taken glimpses in this session from the lives now of the entire 10. Uh, blessed uh, companions from the Ashara Mubashara. Hence, I'm moving on to discuss other companions of the beloved Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and learn from their lives uh, this piety that we want to learn. And in between, we are discussing only Allah and other beloved servants of Allah. So <clears throat> the, compu- the, 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 the companion that we've taken today and I'm, I'm, I'm trying to learn from and we want to learn from is Hazrat Sayyidina Uthman bin Maz'un radiallahu uh, It is reported that uh, he is the first person who was laid to rest in Jannatul Baqi Sharif amongst the companions of the beloved Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and it is reported that after he passed away the beloved Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam kissed him on his forehead Subhanallah today people ask that sometimes when, the, when your family members pass away the people kiss their elders on the forehead to, as, as a sign of respect or as a sign of love or the mashayikh they may want to kiss them on their forehead after they've left this dunya but you know why, why do you do this? where, where is it found? Look, it is evident from this hadith of Hadrat Sayyidina Uthman bin Maz'un from this narration that when he passed away, the beloved Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi kissed him on his forehead and made dua and the beloved Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam bury him in Baqi. Bury, in, bury him, lay him to rest in Baqi so that for us in this matter he may be the first of the elders, in other words, to be resting there. This is the respect that Rasul Pak Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam showed for the elders. This is the respect that Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam showed for the pious and gave us a lesson till Qiyamah. This, this is how it should be. Now, with the exception of being a Sahabi of Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam, it is also reported that Hazrat Sayyidina Osman bin Mas'un radiallahu I'm just telling you a little bit about him before we talk about this great lessons from his life. Hazrat Osman bin Mas'un radiallahu is also the, the foster brother, the Razai brother of the beloved Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Now, we all know what Jannatul Baqi is, okay? Jannatul Baqi is also known as uh, Baqi Garqad, and this is because in that time there were many trees in Baqi. That is why it was called Garqad, many trees. Uh, and and and, and uh, these trees were called Gharqad. That's why Baki is known as Baki Gharqad. Okay, and today we call it Jannatul Baki. Uh, the beloved Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had those trees removed and cleared the land, and then had Hazrat Sayyidina Uthman bin Mas'un radiallahu anh, laid to rest there. He was buried there after he passed away. Before that, there were many trees on, in, in Jannatul Baki, and then these were removed. The land was cleared, and Hazrat Sayyidina Uthman bin Mas'un radiallahu anh, was buried there. Now, uh, regarding his cover, while we are on the discussion. It is reported that his grave is situated towards the, according to uh, the, the narrations in Jazbul Qulub and a few other authentic uh, kitabs, his grave is situated towards the eastern side of which used to be the house of Hadrat Sayyidina Aqil radiallahu uh, This used to be uh, on the direction of where used to be the house of, of Hadrat Sayyidina uh, Aqil radiallahu ta'ala. Uh, Sheikh Abdul Haq, Sheikh Muhaddis Delvi wrote in Jazbul Qulub, that at the time of writing the book, in other words, at the time when Sheikh Abdul Haq Mahadis Delvi was writing the kitab, Jazbul Qulub, he says at the time of writing this book, the grave of Hadrat Osman bin Maz'un Radilan still had a dome over it. It still had a gumbad over it. Sadly, this gumbad, and I'm saying sadly, this gumbad, and the numerous uh, net of numerous companions and the Ahl Bayt were bulldozed, were bulldozed by the Saudi regime uh, and, and, and destroyed, okay? So, however, the fact that there were domes, there were gumbads over the mazars of these beloveds, 
is evidence that it was the manner of the Ahl Madina to honor the graves of the, of the beloveds. And this dis- destruction and desecration was started by the Wahhabis who broke down sacred sites but have no shame. They break down the sacred sites but they have no sharam in building semana- cinemas and places of guna and bl- building places that are places of, 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 of attraction for the kuffar and everybody else. But they break down those madarat and those gumbads that were there from the time of the Ahl Madina of that time. Okay, who respected uh, the mazars of the pious servants of Allah, uh, like the Ahl Bayt and like Hadr Osman bin Mazoon. But Hazrat Sayyidina Shaykh Mahakik is clearly mentioning in Jazbul Qulub that until the time that he had been writing that kitab, the <coughs> dome was still over the Qabr Sharif of uh, Hazrat Sayyidina Osman bin Mazoon, which, as you know, today they have flattened everything. Uh, one important point while we're talking about uh, this. Uh, today and, I, and, 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 and before that actually Huzur Sayyidi Sarkar Mufti Azam Hind Huzur Ghusul Waqt said truly about the desecration and the destruction that these people have caused. He said, Ke tere habib ka piyara chaman kiya barbad. They have destroyed, they have tried to, to ruin the beautiful gardens of the beloved Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Ilahi nikle ye najdi bala madine se. Oh Allah may this najdi evil be removed from Madina Tul Munawara because of the destruction that they have caused in the sacred land and in the sacred city of the Bila of Rasul sallallahu wa ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. Now, <clears throat> Hazrat Osman bin Maz'un radiallahu anhu was laid to rest over there. Okay? Now, we want to, the discussion that we're trying to learn from here today is that the adab that is given to the pious when they leave the dunya. And this you learned yourself from what Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did when he himself kissed him on his forehead. When he, Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam himself said, let him, go, let him be sent forth so he may be beneficial to us, for, to our elders who come thereafter, etc. And the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam laid him there to rest. Now we're going to talk more about this. One important point to note here is, uh, while I'm on the topic, uh, the 19th, if I, if I remember right, 19th of Ramadan marks the visal of the beloved daughter of the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Hadrat Sayyidatuna Ruqayya radiallahu anha. And alhamdulillah, uh, the narration that I'm going to present now is also going to do with Sayyidatuna Ruqayya radiallahu anha. One important point, and may Allah bless us with the mercy and the blessings and, and the fuyus and the barakat of Sayyidatuna Ruqayya radiallahu ta'ala anha. Uh, one important point to note here is that when Sayyidatuna Ruqayya radiallahu anha, this, the beloved daughter of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa passed away from this dunya, the beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam commanded that she, she should be laid to rest near Hadrat Osman bin Maz'un radiallahu anha. What did Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa give hukum? She should be laid to rest near Hadrat Osman bin Maz'un radiallahu anha. In other words, wherever he's, he's resting, that is where she should be laid to rest, right? So this was commanded by the beloved Rasul sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam that when Hadrat Ruqayya radiallahu ta'ala an passed away, Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam commanded that she should be laid to rest next to where Hadrat Sayyidina Uthman bin Maz'un radiallahu anhu was resting. The reason for this is that when the beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was laying Hadrat Uthman bin Maz'un in his, to rest in his grave because the beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam laid him to rest in his cover, subhanallah, when he passed away. This grand sahabi of Rasulullah Sallam. So when the beloved Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was rest, uh, was laying Hazrat Osman bin Mas'un radiallahu an, or had him laid in his cover to rest in his grave, the beloved Rasul asked for a huge stone, a rock, to be brought. But because of its weight, it could not be brought to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The other sahabi could not pick it. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam then went himself and effortlessly picked up the rock. Subhanallah. This showed that the Nabi, even the sahaba believed that the Nabi was not like us. Because what they couldn't do, the Nabi went and did it easily by the command and by the hukum of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Nabi, what they could not pick that rock and bring it. Nabi himself went effortlessly and he picked the rock by himself and he placed it as a tombstone at his foot side according to some narrations and some narrations at the head side. Okay? But Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam placed a stone, a marker at the grave of Hazrat Uthman bin Mas'un radiallahu anhu. Now thereafter, the beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, from now on, I will lay all my ahl bayt who pass away near the grave of Osman bin Ma'azun radiallahu anhu. Subhanallah. Now, look at this. What is Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam teaching us? Because Osman bin Ma'azun radiallahu anhu was such a beloved companion, and he was amongst the first to be rested there in Jannatul Baqi, the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, that from now on, whoever, whosoever of my ahl bayt as they pass away, I will lay them to rest near Osman bin Ma'azun radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Say, hence, uh, Sayyida Ruqayya, who was also the wife of Sayyidina Osman Ghani, radiallahu anhu, who is the wife of Osman Ghani, radiallahu anhu, was laid to rest near Hadrat Osman bin Mas'un, radiallahu anhu. In the early days, there was a dome near this area, also known as uh, Gumba, the, the Quba Ibanat, which symbolizes the graves of the daughters, the mazars of the daughters of Rasulullah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So, this alone now is telling us that Rasul Makbul, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, uh, <coughs> laid Hadrat uh, Sayyidatuna Ruqayya radiallahu anhu to rest next to Hadrat Osman bin Mazun. Now again, we're coming back to what we were talking about initially, that 
desire and the wish to be buried near the pious servants of Allah. Look what we're learning from the lives of the pious and here from the court of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa And let me tell you about another pious person that was laid to rest next to her. Hazrat, uh, next to him, Hazrat Sayyidatuna Fatima binti Asad. She's the mother of Amir al-Mu'mineen, Mawla Ali radiallahu anh. She's also buried next to the grave of Hazrat Ibrahim, Hazrat Abdullah bin Maz'un and Hazrat Sayyidatuna Ruqayya radiallahu ta'ala Okay? Now, <clears throat> Hazrat Abdurrahman bin Awf, who we talked about a few days ago, from amongst the Ashara Mubashara, is also resting beside the grave of Hazrat Usman bin Mas'un in that same area. It is reported that it was close to the time of Hazrat Abdurrahman bin Awf to pass from this world. Sayyidatuna Aisha Siddiqa sent a person to him with this message that if after you pass away and you wish, then you will be made to rest beside the beloved Rasul Sallallahu where your brothers Abu, Abu Bakr and Hazrat Umar are resting. Subhanallah. Look at what Sayyidatuna Aisha Siddiqa radiallahu anh, offered Hazrat Abdurrahman ibn Awf radiallahu anh. But he replied by saying, that her blessed Ujra, Hujra chambers will become small. It will become uh, difficult because it will become smaller. That was her Hujra. Hence, he did not request this. He then said that Hadrat Osman bin Maz'un and, and him had an understanding between themselves. That whichever one of us passes away, when the other passes away, he will be buried next to the first. Hence, when he passed away, when Hadrat Sayyidina Abdurrahman ibn Awf passed away, he was buried next to Hazrat Osman bin Mazur. So even in their lifetime, they talked about it, that they wanted to be buried next to the pious, their pious and their close companions and friends. Subhanallah. Okay, so this again tells us how important it is. It's a very important lesson we are learning here, I think. Hazrat Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqqas, again from the Ashara Mubashara. Hazrat Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqqas is from the Ashara Mubashara. Now, again, who is the Ashara Mubashara? I'm reminding you, I've been reminding you always, those ten companions who Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi gave glad tidings of Jannah while they were physically on the earth. Now there is also a narration from Ibn, uh, Ibn Sheba and from Ibn Dhaqqan that Hadrat Sa'ad Ibn Waqqas took him to gentle, uh, to, to gentle Baki and showed uh, a place near Hadrat Osman bin Maz'un and told them that when he passed away, he should be made to rest there. So all desired this closeness to the pious servant that was first placed over there okay, and put to rest there. Now <clears throat> from all this, uh, we learned that Hadrat Sayyiduna uh, Uthman bin Maz'un was a very blessed personality. We understand that he was a very blessed personality. And the beloved companions all wished to be laid to rest next to him and near him, including the daughters of Nabi Karim which the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam wished for them to be laid to rest there. So, look at how we learn from the lives of the pious about piety and about being with the pious in the dunya and trying to be close to them after we leave this world as well. And even how we should respect the graves of the deceased. Look, the, the beloved Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, what did he do? He took a rock and he placed it in the cover as a mark, sign of, as a sign of, of, of recognition at the grave of Hazrat Osman bin Maz'un radiallahu anh. This proves that to build mazars for the awliya and put signs like Chadar Sharif on the graves so that people recognize it as the grave of a special and a blessed personality is permitted. As this practice of making the mazars of the pious recognizable is from the time of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with his own hand put a rock at the grave, as a tombstone as a, at the grave of Hadrat Sayyidina Osman bin Maz'un radiallahu ta'ala. So this alone again, we learn something very important from here that when we ask that why you give so much of recognition or why do you do things that cause people to recognize the awliya, we do this because this is from the time of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in a way and at the same time so that the people will recognize and then want to be buried next to them and want to go there and take their blessings and want to go there and make dua. Okay, this is what has been taught from the time of the beloved Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Now, <clears throat> further, uh, talking about Hadrat Osman bin Ma'adun and about learning from the pious, uh, there is another beautiful uh, narration uh, related to, 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 to humility, to the humility of Hadrat Osman bin Ma'adun from which, once again, we learn humility like we've been learning from the others. Even the Sahaba Ikram at times wish they were somewhat more comfortable so that they could uh, better care for their families. Obviously, they wanted to be more comfortable. They wanted to earn a little bit more. But they did not wish this at the expense of their deen. Always remember. They did not wish this at the expense of their deen. Their deen and the iman was always first and everything else came thereafter. And this is a very important lesson we need to learn. Hadrat Sayyidina Shahab Zahri, Zahri reports that one day Hadrat Sayyidina Uthman bin Maz'un radiallahu an came to the Masjid Nabi Sharif wearing a covering, a sheet with patches on it. So many patches on it made from pieces of skin, in other words, leather, skin from the, from, from the animals. On seeing this, when, when, when Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa saw this, and the Sahaba Ikram saw this, the beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam began to weep, the beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa began to tear, when he saw the, 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 the condition 
and 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 the, and, and the humility and the and the condition of poverty of Hazrat Usman bin Maz'un radiallahu anhu because he was an elder Sahabi, okay? And the Sahaba Ikram, when they saw the beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam weeping, they also wept. The Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam then, when he saw this, he said, Oh my Sahaba, how will your condition be then when in the mornings you will be dressed in one set of clothing and in the evening you will be wearing another set of clothing? And when one dish after, other, after the other will be served to you and curtains like the gilaf of the holy Kaaba will be hanging in your homes. Subhanallah. The beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to the Sahaba Ikram that how will it be when you will, today you don't have the, a proper set of clothes to wear you in, in sheets and in patches but the day will come when you will have a set to wear in the morning and you will have a set to wear in the evening and you will have the best dishes put in front of you and your homes will have curtains and veils like the Kaaba, of, like the gilaf of the Kaaba uh, that look like the gilaf of the Kaaba hanging in your homes. In other words, beautiful veils and beautiful pardas and beautiful uh, curtains and if you look at it to, the, to what that the beloved Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said then, even we have it in our homes today. We have even, we can, we can wear clothes in the morning and evening, many of us. We can, we're getting the best of food. We can, but do we make sugar for this? It's something to think about. When the Nabi, when the, when, 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 when Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said this to the Sahaba Ikram, how will your condition be then? When in the mornings you'll be dressed in one set of clothing, clothes and in the evening you'll be wearing another set of clothes. And at one dish after the other will be served to you. And curtains like that of the gilaf of the Kaaba will be hanging in your homes. The Sahaba Ikram Ridwan out of good intention said, Ya Rasulullah, it would be nice if that would have happened. Uh, it would be nice if that uh, would have happened, as uh, there would be some ease and comfort in it for us. The beloved Nabi Sallallahu said, It will surely happen. It will surely happen like this. What did Nabi Sallallahu say? It will surely happen like this, even though today you are better off than you will be on that day. Why? Because today, although they were in poverty, Although they were in, we, we were in tattered and torn clothing, although they didn't have uh, three meals a day at times, but they were in the company physically of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the piety and the level of the piety of the people of that time was best. And that was the best era because the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, uh, Khair al Qurun Karni, the best era of every era, is the best zamana of every zamana is my zamana. So, subhanallah, that is why Huzur Akram sallallahu alayhi wa was telling them that. This will surely happen, even though today you are better off than you will be on that day. Okay, even though so it means doesn't mean that you have all the the wealth and everything else. You are better off. You are better off when you are closer to the time and to the blessings of the beloved Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So look at the Sahaba Ikram. Uh, look at their lives. They own and and let me tell you the reason that they wished for this comfort. The only reason that they said and they wished for these comforts was because Nabi Karim said sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that the day will come when this will be then when. When this will be such and such, in other words, such and such will happen. You will get new clothing, and uh, you will be able to wear new clothes, and you'll get good food, etc. And they only wished for it because they were acknowledging the words of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, accepting that because the Nabi said this will happen, so we are acknowledging and saying yes, it will be good. So let us learn from the lives uh, of the pious servants of Allah, and let us learn from their lives and their passing away as well of the beloved servants of Allah, so that we benefit here and we benefit in the hereafter. A very short rule for today. We've been giving the rules daily. Uh, we often see Nabalik boys are made to lead Tarawi Salah. Obviously, in, in this time, many of the masajids cannot have Tarawi as well. But when, when the Tarawis happen, on the last few days, especially after the, the Khatam Sharif has been done, after the, the 27th night, we find that in many masajid, the youngsters are, being, are put to perform the Tarawi. And many occasions, these, these, these youngsters are Nabalik. So the question is asked that, are Nabaliks allowed to lead the Tarawi Salah? in the last few nights of Ramadan, etc., or any other time, is this permitted? And the law, raw rule of Sharia is that the namaz of those who are uh, balik, and those, the adults, the balik, is not valid behind those who are not balik, those who have not age, attained the age of puberty. And this is with reference to Bahari Sharia, and it references to Fatwa Alam Giri as well. So keep this in your mind. Allah keep us with Iman. Let us leave this world with Iman. May Allah bless us with the barakat and the blessings of Sayyidatuna Ruqayya and all the pious servants of Allah. And uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with the barakat. Today is the 19th of Ramadan. Tomorrow is the 20th and the doors towards uh, Itaqaf will be opening. Inshallah, I will give a few uh, rules about that tomorrow. Inshallah, and we'll talk about some blessings there. May Allah keep us with Iman. Let us leave this world with Iman. Uh, wa ma'alina al-balaq. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.